Hi, I'm Brian Woodbury, and you're watching the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Join Jake and his friends on a journey through pop culture of the past, where they interview professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and so much more. Who will they be chatting with today? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Have a here with us, thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenball, Moon as always, our co-host, Chris Bixby, and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Hello, everybody. How are you, Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Uh, thank you for asking. What do we have for today? Our special guest today is a puppeteer for Sesame Street including uh, puppeteering one of the outreach projects here for you, which we'll get into. But most of you may know her as the puppeteer Burdette on the PBS series. It's a big, big world. We'll talk about that and a lot of others with our special guest. Please welcome Melissa Crichton. Welcome, Melissa. Happy to have you here. Hello. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Oh, we're delighted. We are delighted to have you here. So to kick this off, uh, could you tell our audience a bit about yourself and what you do? Um, sure. So my name's uh, Melissa, Melissa Creighton, and I'm a puppeteer, a puppet artist, a producer, and a problem solver. So I've uh, been in and around the you know New York area for over 20 years and uh, freelancing, doing both performing, you know, puppeteering jobs like what you said, Burdette, and then also building puppets, managing projects, puppet wrangling, um, working in both puppet theater and television and um, yeah, everything in between. Nice, hmm. nice. So what was your childhood like before working in puppetry? Um, good question. I grew up in Minnesota. Um, I am one of five kids, so I'm from a big family and I really enjoy being in big groups and, uh, you know, uh, uh, chaotic environments. That's kind of how I grew up and where I thrive. So in a way I feel like, uh, television production and theater production is kind of a, a, a perfect home for me because of kind of what I'm used to in groups. You know, my mom was very crafty and uh, creative. And so I think I get that from her. And then my dad is uh, very technical and has um, worked, you know, with uh, um, computers and kind of cutting edge technology, Minnesota Public Radio and other places like that. And he also has managed big projects. So kind of similar to what I do. And and um, so I feel like I, I get those sides of me from both of my parents. Um, yeah, I went to school in Chicago at Northwestern, studied film and in theater. I kind of weaseled my way into the theater program, even though I have a film degree and then moved to New York right after to just do what, you know, what what I thought would be uh, film work. Like I was thinking kind of camera work and film work, but always kind of had this love and interest for puppetry, but hadn't really done anything with it until after college. And then I just started getting interested and involved in different puppet projects and one thing leads to the next. And, you know, after a while it was kind of all I did was, was puppet stuff. But the very, very first real inspiration to, to make my own puppet projects came from Bread and Puppet, which I don't know if you're familiar with that group, but that's a, um, a theater puppetry group that uh, does big um, parade style puppets and smaller puppet shows, but mostly kind of bigger parade style puppets um, mm. in Vermont. And so I got really inspired just about kind of how puppetry can address big issues in a playful, meaningful way. And, um, and that really got me excited to make my own stuff. I brought a picture of the very first puppet I ever made. Oh, nice. Ooh, cool. Nice. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, that is cool. So that's nice. that's that's me under the you know under the puppet. So it's a it's a big white bird, 
I built her three times because that's the amount of times it takes to do something really right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it got started. Nice. And I'm kind of Very nice. kind of curious. Did you have like any favorite puppetry projects growing up? You mean that I watched? Yeah. Or yeah, I mean I was definitely Yeah. a Sesame Street kid. Like that was on and around and was was kind of in its like early heyday when when I was uh uh you know learning to read and write and all that. But um I my mom likes to tease me that Mr. Rogers was my 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 bigger love. So she's what what am I doing with all these Muppet puppets? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so now uh now uh, uh for now uh, we we're talking about growing up uh was there any muppets you say you were most fascinated by oh like a specific muppet character i think you know just the whole uh, uh kind of like underneath the frame world of puppetry always fascinated me kind of how the you know hand and rod puppets and are uh, manipulated and how they kind of look so real and alive but um you know and, and all of the kind of action that's happening below the frame I really have always been fascinated by yeah so the classic Muppet characters you know and and Gonzo and Piggy and Kermit and just a really kind of those those puppets that are so simple but can convey so much uh you know in with without any kind of mechanical you know pieces or parts or animatronic uh anything can really just like pull at your heartstrings you know in a in a way that 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 can surprise you and so yeah definitely Absolutely, Ken. Absolutely. So uh, early on in your career, you worked as a production coordinator and production manager for Shadow Character Design. Uh, do you kind of talk about like what you did with that specifically and what that was all about? Yeah, that was on a project called Sizzling Kung Fu Mice that you probably have not heard of because it was <laughs> a, it was a test uh, for a feature film concept. So we were building uh, puppets and and uh, shooting a, a short three to five minute test for a, a film and it, it never ended up happening. But for me, it was a really big um, step because it was the first time I had managed a build in a puppet workshop. So up until that point, I had, um, I worked in, I mean, first I did a lot of PA work, like production assistant work on different commercials, mainly commercials, some kind of TV uh, work, interstitials with um, MTV and, and different things like that around New York City, and then kind of did more art department work. And then I ended up working in a scenic workshop, a prop workshop, and then I ended up managing in that prop workshop. And then that's how I reconnected to the, some of the puppet people I knew, and then was hired to manage this puppet workshop during the Zling Kung Fu Mice build. Yeah, and I met, I that is the place where I met a lot of the people that I still work with today. Nice. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. That's that's wonderful. So now uh you got to work on Sesame Street for several years as a puppeteer. How do you kind of begin well, working just, for them? So I uh puppeteered for Sesame Street. So I puppeteered on um a social impact uh short uh here for you. I played uh Chester's mom and um I mean, just a, a story about how I got that. I um, I had already done the first season of Big Big World, and I don't know how I got involved. I either got invited or I auditioned to be a part of a puppet workshop. And I'm sure you've heard of these at Sesame. They do puppet workshops from time to time to find new puppeteers. Mm -hmm. And so I was in a big room of people puppeteers and we were all 
you know, there were puppets all laid out on tables. And I remember Kevin Clash was there. And um, I love Bo Kevin. He's great. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and and a couple other sesame puppeteers and they led us through you know kind of improv exercises and things like that and there was uh, I think it was three days and then the second day some of the people were cut and then the third day some of the people were cut it was kind of a smaller group and we sang we had to sing something and oh, that wow. yeah mm -hmm. that's I remember catching Kevin's attention and so he was like oh you know Melissa can sing okay and then and then he reached out to me like less than a week later and asked if I wanted to perform in a in in the the Sesame Street piece here for you. So that was like kind of mind blowing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and it was fun because we. Yeah, it, it... yeah, go ahead. No, I was I was gonna say uh, here for you is a wonderful wonderful project. Uh, certainly, love yeah. that very much. It's so so yeah. great. It really is. I just I just love the connection of Elmo and Chester. Like, you know, oh so, yeah, I'm like it's, it's gonna be okay. And you now you know, Joey, he did Joey Masuino. He he did such a great job on that character. Joey's yes, he did. Joey's just yes, he did. down yeah. to earth, wonderful guy. He's amazing. Yeah. And an amazing, you know, you meet a lot of these guys in the, especially in the kind of like all, all those Muppet Sesame performer puppeteers and they, they direct and they write and they perform and they kind of do all of these different things all in and around, you know, puppetry. And so, yeah, he's one of those really talented guys. Yeah. And we recorded in a, you know, we had to record the song in a recording studio, which that was the first part of it, which was great and just kind of like amazing. You know, I hadn't really done that with the, you know, these Sesame Street guys before. And then, uh, and then, and then we had a shoot and we were all kind of huddled together with the puppets and it was it was great. It was really great. And then I performed one, one episode on, uh, the Sesame Street season. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Do you remember what the episode awesome. was? You know, I don't. I tried to look it up. I Googled myself. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I looked. It was, it, I know it was in 2007, but I, I'm not mm. sure which episode it was. Ah. Yeah. No, so, um, of course, as yeah, we mentioned yeah, in your... It's so wonderful. It's just, it's just a wonderful piece. Yes. Yeah, so... Yeah. Of course, as we mentioned in your uh, introduction, you perform the character Burdette on It's a Big, Big World, which uh, used a uh, tabletop puppetry. What was the process of uh, getting that character like? Well, I can talk about the audition. Um, yeah. We had, so we had mock-ups of the puppets to audition with. And so I just didn't know enough to know that you know, she was white, like just made from kind of white fur. I mean, now I know I've been around and know that this would have been the initial version and, and she, you know, the, the fur hadn't been dyed yet and she wasn't built with the kind of the final materials, but they had a white version of her uh, for the audition. And I, I heard that there were auditions and, you know, that's directed by Mitchell Kriegman, who is also the director for Kung Fu Mice. So I kind of knew him and just thought, oh, what the hell? I'm just going to ask if I can audition too. And, and, you know, somebody said, okay. And I, I went in and I've always felt really connected to birds and of course this kind of um you know hand puppet style of puppetry and so I auditioned for a few different characters but that was really the one that I felt was really me and then I got called back and I just remember kind of having one of those moments when I was auditioning where I just really felt like I was this character and um and I thought you know if it doesn't happen for me at least I know I did the best that I could at this audition. And um, yeah, I got the part. Oh, and Mitchell Kriegman called me. And I remember I was in Central Park and not sure what I was doing. I just kind of, you know, going around. And uh, he called me himself to tell me that I got the part. And he said, are you sure? 
<laughs> because I just was, it was like, he was taking a, a risk on me because I hadn't ever done, you know, a big role in a TV show like that, like a whole season of a TV show. I mean, it was really mm. good for me. That was just a great opportunity. There's no other way to learn, you know, than to be there every day, you know, rehearsing and performing and, and there with the group. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious, do you have any favorite it's a big, big world episodes? You know, I don't have a favorite episode, but I have a favorite song uh, that, oh, yeah. Bert, that Bertette sang, um, Home. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. that's a classic. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I really love that song. and um, Yeah, it's a big, big world, had a lot of wonderful songs. I mean, I always love the ones that uh, the characters sing together, like Curve of the World. Yeah, I love Curve of the World. Such a oh, good yeah, song. a great one. Yeah, yeah. And also, I think, like, I love that merging of hand puppets and the tabletop Boon Raku style puppetry. And um, that was just, that that show is such a great use of that style of puppetry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and everyone I worked with there was so generous with me, you know, like, Peter Linz and James Godwin and Tim Legasse and Paul McGinnis, Amy Garcia, Carol Binion. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Jim Krupa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, such mm. a Eric, Eric Engelhart, like Tyler Bunch, such a good group. And everyone was really kind and generous. And, you know, you end up working it in a, you know, you're in a little clump, like all, you know, three puppeteers around a puppet that's like, you know, that big. And so you end up getting really close, you know, and kind of um and 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 used to moving, you know, in a in a in a group like that and kind of like sensing what the next what the next move is. And um the tracks were all pre-recorded because we were in blue suits that covered our faces. And so we had to really rehearse and perform in a kind of choreographed way and to to get it right so that was kind of a bonding experience <laughs> <laughs> nice so mm -hmm. i'm sure it's a big big world fans are wondering is it fine if we can hear a little bit of a uh, burdette oh yeah um yeah like hello um oh i can't even remember i haven't done burdette in so long uh it's like really close to my voice <laughs> <laughs> Oh, snook. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So uh, I want to mention a couple of uh, episodes of A Big World that uh, Bert's kind of more like focused on Bertette. I feel like if I'm um, explaining, I feel like you might remember. Um, one, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, it's a one for show. Uh, um, there's one where basically uh, it's called Bertette's Nest, where she was like, like freaking out about like a hole that um <laughs> yes that, yes and that, i had to patch up the hole yes yes and snook and uh, smooch has to kind of to help her and then she's oh yes. you know she was you know you're good at the, at the, I at totally the end of so and the, i do um, remember uh the, uh, the know, oh yeah the, the bird dead queen ant yes that's a great one too i do remember that one the, you know the nest is just a small practical piece like a practical kind of front part of the nest and then the branches and then one branch nearby that's kind of a practical kind of branch shaped thing and the whole I'm sure you know this but the whole background and the rest of it is uh CG so it's all animated background and we could see it live while we're performing so if the camera is kind of following us fly to the nest you can see how we you know we can see ourselves in the monitor kind of moving through the background you know to whatever the location is so yeah yes nice. and uh and, and the bird's head mm -hmm. bald eagle oh yeah when she's molting yes yeah. yes <laughs> I have yes. to watch it again. Yeah, I think it's on Amazon. I think all of it's on Amazon Prime now. Yeah, yeah. and on and on YouTube now. Yeah, actually. yeah, I can watch that too. It is on YouTube too. Yeah, um, that's 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 great. And yeah. uh, 
and then funny enough, actually, a couple of years ago, she was actually like the uh, displayed at the Center for Puppetry Arts. Yes. Yeah. Did you get to see that, Jake? No, no. unfortunately. I mean, I mean, I live, you know, I, I live in Maryland, so it's kind of like <laughs> far away to get there. I mean, I mean, I mean, I would imagine if I went there, I'd be like, oh my gosh, it's it's birthday right there and snorkeling. <laughs> but yeah, i know the people I think... that i went there did have a wonderful time seeing those yeah center, yeah, center, for, of... center for puppetry arts is in uh, atlanta georgia for those wondering yes yes yeah i heard that that was happening but i i don't know if the puppets were donated or if they were just on loan but i wish i had gotten there to see it because that would have been so great yeah, Burdette is such a beautiful puppet. And she's got that eye mech that, you know, so her eyes blink. And I mm. just think like she's so she's she's such a beautiful puppet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. So kind of moving on from uh Big Big World, uh, you also puppeteered in uh Henson Alternatives uh Stuffed and Unstrung. Can you share any memories from performing with that? Yeah, just being like totally scared out of my wits because it's <laughs> unscripted, totally unscripted and awesome. And if you've done any, you know, improv work, it's like all about kind of practicing the the rules and um, and then throwing them out the window and just being in the moment. So, yeah, yeah, that was just like totally amazing i i subbed in for a few performances and it was just like really wild and awesome and great just to be on stage with such talented puppeteers and improvisers yeah it's a really great show it is still running you know uh oh, yeah uh, as puff yeah. it up yeah puff it up it's just like such a great such a great combination of those two worlds of puppetry and improv. Patrick Bristow is so incredible. At... Oh, I love Patrick. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. So. Yeah, he, he's he's the best. And we, we, he's a, he's a previous guest too. We had him on. You did last year, I think. Yeah, last summer, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. So, oh. um. So what was it like performing in the Macy's parade float uh, with uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? Yeah, well, I love parades and, uh, you know, love parade style puppets, although the the Imaginary Friends float was all hand puppets. Right. Um, but it was so great. You know, it's they, you know, have a contract for three years. So we got to do it three years in a row. And uh I was you know up inside the house kind of popping through the window and you can hear the the crowd shouting and it was just really great like uh you know Macy's parade is just top level like that's that's uh, it was yeah it was fantastic it was really it's a lot it's exhausting for your arm you know and your in your hand to kind of stay there but um it was great yeah so you also puppeteered for companies such as Waka Waka Productions and Cosmic Bicycle Theater. What were those like? Well, Waka Waka is um, based in Norway and Brooklyn. Oh, wow. And so I just love their work and had seen uh, one show and noticed that they were having auditions. And so I just thought, let me give this a try. You know, I'm always just trying to kind of stretch myself and, you know, try something different and new, but still connected to my passion for, for puppetry and, uh, and theater, you know, and television. And so I auditioned and got called back and got cast and was a part, did you see baby universe? Have you seen that show? I don't think so. It, uh, it, no, I don't think so. No. It's it's fantastic. It's a about you know it's a it's a puppet show and it's a kind of apocalyptic you know comedy and uh, it's um, we toured all around uh, Norway and we toured to um, 
Cuba and we were a part of the international puppetry um, festival in China and just got to really explore the world and um, yeah it was really great I I did you know hand puppetry and then also uh, stilt walking so I I I walk on stilts and I've I've done that for a couple different shows and this was one of them I played a big sun character like a big kind of angry red monster that uh walked on you know was walked on stilts and had oh, my wow. hand above my head you know to manipulate his his tiny little head and yeah it was a really kind of life-changing nice. yeah Waka Waka is definitely a group to to watch to follow there they're in Chicago right now performing as a part of the Chicago Puppetry Festival. Oh, nice. Hmm, yeah. Cool. And Cosmic Bicycle, I did not perform with uh, Johnny. I um, I built his set for, oh, wow. for one of his shows. Yeah. Hmm. And then I did, I did perform with him. He did, uh, it was like a record release performance for Nora Jones where it was oh, wow. an entire it was a choreographed piece to her album to the music of her album oh, wow. <laughs> and and I was a part of that and yeah I had my own um puppet company egg-shaped productions and we created uh shows mostly for kids or family audiences and performed and mostly with the parks department. So around New York city, you know, in Madison square park, not always outdoor venues, some indoor venues too, but um, yeah, did a lot of, a lot of theater work that is kind of less easily found uh, online that, that part of my uh, resume <laughs> and puppet slams, <laughs> a lot of puppet slams too. So nice. Hmm. Yeah. I'm I'm curious about the, this uh, record release though. Uh, what do you said? Like, was it was it the entire album you guys performed, or just a couple songs? Or I think it. You know, I I think it was seven songs. So I was, but I, I'm not sure if that was the entire album. I'm pretty sure it was the whole album. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it was cool. It was a a, a fun kind of just like an oddball kind of New York City moment. Nice. Very nice. So uh, moving on from your puppeteering work, what was it like building puppets for Avenue Q? Well, that was in uh, Rick Lyons' shop. And, oh, yeah, um, I love Rick. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so he, we were building for, I believe it was the production or a production that was happening in South America. And it was duplicating the puppets. And that was really when I, you know, I found out it was happening and I was managing projects at the time. I had not, that was before Big Big World, before performing with Sesame. And I just knew that I needed more puppet building experience because I had built in scenic shops and in prop shops, but I hadn't really built in a puppet workshop. And I just wanted to see if I could get that experience too and so um yeah so he hired me and I worked with uh just a lot of really talented people and um commuted to New Jersey every day and and Rick was rehearsing the show at the same time so I remember he was kind of we'd work in the mornings and then he would get there in the afternoon and give us feedback on you know what we were doing and what needed to be tweaked or adjusted and kind of go from there but yeah it felt amazing and you know important to kind of uh be working on those those characters that I just love Avenue Q I mean the first time I saw it I was I was giddy like as if I had been involved in making it which I hadn't but I just felt like wow like this is my world on you know on stage so I've just really loved that show <laughs> it was great uh to be a but just even a small way right yeah it's wonderful yeah so you are also a puppet wrangler on several projects with the muppets including a muppets christmas letters to santa what was that experience like 
So that's just, you know, being there, you know, on set every day or responsible for the, you know, kind of technical aspect of the puppets and styling them and making sure they're, um, you know, on camera and ready, you know, kind of on time and ready to do whatever the, whatever the scene requires. So yeah, that was the, I, I had done a, a, a lot of just kind of one-off Muppet wrangling gigs up until that point. So mostly that's like a Today Show appearance with, you know, Piggy and Kermit or, um, you know, a, a short commercial shoot, like little things that were just a few days here and there. And so I, I, I knew the basics and then I was just really excited to do a kind of bigger, longer project. And so we were out at Steiner Studios in Brooklyn um, every day and just shooting. And that was like, what an education, you know, to see all the great puppeteers and just be there kind of at the ready, you know, watching watching the monitor and making sure the the puppets are ready for for every shot. So, and I worked with uh, Stefan Rotondaro and uh, and Jane Gutnick and um, and Peter McKinnon and I just had a blast. It's a lot of work, you know, long hours, but it was you know, there's no better way to learn, you know, than to really like see all these people in action. Absolutely. So now, uh, what was it like getting kind of getting to wrangling for the Muppets uh, 2011 and uh, Muppets Most Wanted? Yeah, it was great. It was something I always wanted. You know, I wanted to work on a movie, like on a longer project. You know, I've worked, I had up until that point worked on a lot of commercials and a lot of appearances with the Muppets, but I hadn't worked and, and I worked on TV shows. Like at that point I had worked on, um, I think I'd worked on big, big world at that point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Because that's when so we, uh, 2010, that's when that show stopped. Yeah. And so, uh, but I hadn't worked on a movie. So that was, I mean, it's a, it, it's made for TV movie, but it was, my movie. So I felt really great, you know, just being able to do something every day like that, you know, you just get more experience that way, you know, when you're doing something kind of day after day, like really in the the slog kind of, you know, learning and, and making mistakes and, you know, kind of figuring things out and seeing how, how the pros, like how the very best people do it. So both the wrangling part and the puppeteering, I loved seeing the the performers, you know, and I forgot to mention, I worked on Ubi. Do you know that show? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I love Ubi. Yeah. Yes, Ubi. Yeah, yeah such a wonderful show. show. Yeah, very unique and show Stephanie too. And Tyler, yeah, such a weird show, like such an oddball kind of <laughs> funky show, but such a great idea. And I, so I worked on that as the set dresser. So I was in the art department oh, okay. because I had done, yeah, I'd done a lot of kind of crafty makery work before that like the building in a in a scenic shop and then in a prop a prop shop and then you know later in a puppet shop but I um so so when I that was that was the first puppet tv show I'd ever worked on and I mm. was that dressing so I was just you know on set with my tool belt and my you know mat spray and my you know whatever my cart, you know, filled with whatever props were needed for the day. And uh, it was just like an education watching, watching all these people work, you know, who are really the best, you know, like I said, you know, Tim Legasse and Stephanie DeBrugio and Tyler Bunch and um, yeah, Noel McNeil and um, I mean, many more. So it was just like really great yeah. to see all of them. Yeah. And, and that, that's when I really kind of started to understand how it all worked. You know, when you see it in person like that, you really kind of get how it all, how, how that style of puppetry works, even without the puppets, like just the eyes on their hands like that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it cer certainly is a wonderful and very unique show, uh, which yeah. is just so fun about it. You know, it's fun and unique. Yeah. Uh, do you know? Do you know how many seasons that 
Uh, How many seasons of movie? Well, I think, well, maybe I think like it two, started maybe out like as around shorts. two. Well, actually, they they were shorts first before it became a show. I think maybe around like two uh, seasons, maybe two, two seasons. Yeah, I, I think it was two seasons, two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not including the shorts. Right. Uh, I think it was two seasons. I think. Yeah. It's been, been a while since I've seen it. I think it was two. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, you were also a part of the core team that launched the puppet design company Puppet Heap, which, for those who do not know, was founded by uh, Paul Andreco, who yes. designed the characters for Bear in the Big Blue House. Uh, what went into launching Puppet Heap? Um. Yeah, love Paul and Draco. Like, what a talented guy, and you know, so brave to uh, just go off from you know working at the Henson workshop and then open his own puppet workshop. And um, really, I was just you know there to do anything from kind of you know answering the phones to ordering workstations and reaching out to puppet builders and you know, interfacing with clients and some of the first, one of the first jobs we had was for a um, architect, uh, Pierre Huig, and we built some marionette puppets for a, a, a short film, you know, that, that he was doing. And it was just like, kind of, uh, you know, being a part of the, the hustle that is, you know, running a puppet workshop, you know, you have to have like a, a couple different projects going at once. And so that was kind of, uh, after Kung Fu Mice was, you know, I managed that puppet workshop, but we just had that one project that we were working on. But working at Puppet Heap, I was a part of managing with a lot of different projects going on at once. And that's really exciting, you know, and just to figure out kind of how to, you know, set up the work. Shop. I mean, I was doing everything from, you know, have not not on my own, but I was kind of, mm -hmm. you know, helping to uh, get the spray booth permitted and, you know, get the right people in to, you know, build for the project and buy the right tools and then, you know, update the client, make sure we meet our deadlines and then kind of juggle that between a couple different projects. So it was really fun. It was a great place. And fun to see it expand. You know, we were in one room and then we expanded to one more and then to one more. And so, you know, that's uh, that's an exciting time to be there. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I, wor I, I worked there for a period of time and then I things got slow there, you know, and this is freelance, right? So then I, I left and worked with the um, Rick Lyon on the Avenue Q puppets because I felt like, well, here I was at Puppet Heat, but not really knowing how to build a puppet, not really having done it. I'd done my own work, you know, my own egg-shaped productions and kind of just like messing around and figuring it out on my own, but I hadn't done it for someone else. So I wanted to give that a try. So that's when I did the Avenue Q work. And then I found out about Big Big World auditions. And then I did Big Big World. And then I kind of went back to freelance. And so a lot of kind of bouncing around between building, performing, managing projects and then you know just kept rolling from there yeah <laughs> nice um so now uh so recently you became uh, a senior uh, production manager for the for the frog walk uh, revival series and, and the emmy awards series as well uh frog walk back to walk what was what was that like well so that's a part of my job as you know i was originally hired as the production manager. Now my title is director of the Jim Henson Company New York Workshop. And so that's all a part of my uh, role here at the Jim Henson Company Workshop. So I, I do really similar to what I did at Puppet Heap, but just with a new set of um, clients and some of the same people, like a lot of the same builders that would work at Puppet Heap also work at, at the Henson Workshop. And so, yeah, it's just like that same same thing, but, you know, maybe like turn the dial up a little because we have very big workshop, big clients, big projects, you know, big deadlines and all kind of overlapping. And um, yeah, it's exciting. And it's like, you know, some of the best people that, you know, have been doing this for a long time. And it's just really like, a privilege you know to to be with them and kind of be a part of be a part of the, the the chaos the kind of beautiful chaos that is you know making puppets 
So it's all something, you know, I always say like, it's, it's, it's all kind of, you know, similar to what we've done before, but each project is totally new. So we're always kind of figuring out how to do something that, that isn't exactly like what we've done before, but you know, that, that's how it should be, right? Like it, it, yeah. we, we shouldn't mm -hmm. do, you know, it, it, it should be, you know, challenging in a new way, but that's what makes it really hard too, but it makes it exciting. So, yeah. <laughs> So oh, yeah. Johnny and Donna and Andy, Haber, Dan Garza, just such wonderful people. What they've done for, for the series. It's just Yeah. Yeah. For Fraggle, for Back to the Rock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're the great. Yeah, yeah. So it's like love that show. So good. Yeah, Johnny's oh, yeah. done a wonderful job taking on Gobo. And same with Donna with Moki. They've done a wonderful yes. job taking on those Wembley's. characters. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they have. Yeah, Wembley yeah. and Wembley. Yeah. So good. Of course. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, check out Back to the Rock on uh, Apple TV Plus if you'd like to check it out. Beautiful show. Uh, so as we're getting close to wrapping up, uh, can you share any projects you're currently working on? At least those you're allowed to talk about, that is. <laughs> you know, I, the, I don't have anything I'm allowed to talk about right now, but I do have something I didn't get a chance to talk about, which is that oh. I... Um, I collaborate with my husband on uh, music videos. He's a musician mm -hmm. and he, uh, he and I have created two music videos together, um, All This Joy and I Do, and then and a bunch of other kind of side projects and, you know, a, a 10 episode, uh, kind of 10 webisodes, little web shorts and um and that's you know something i'm really proud of and you can find that stuff on youtube and i brought martin which is this is my little puppet from one of the Ooh. one of our videos that's have great. you seen these movie videos i have so, yeah uh, yeah yeah martin uh -huh. hi <laughs> hi oh, that's cool oh, that's really cool hi, hi matt hi chris hi <laughs> oh that's Hello. great that's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wow. So, thanks. <laughs> and then yeah. we've done, um, yeah. So I've done, you know, built this puppet and um, other kind of puppet versions of us. And uh, oh. both of those, both of those videos have been featured in the Puppets on Film Festival at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and then mm. also. Um, not Martin, but the the puppet versions of us are a part of a show that um, that I developed called Love Me Not. And so th this is before I worked at the Jim Henson Company. I had received a seed grant and a project grant from the Henson Foundation. And so I'm really proud of that work too. Oh, and I also made these little, I brought another photo. Okay, cool. <laughs> these mini, sure. mini versions uh -huh. of Martin. Nice. Oh, That's wow. Great. So these are like uh, like little finger puppet versions of Martin. Oh my God, they're so little. Cute. <laughs> and, uh, and so I we sold these or kind of gave them away with uh, the album at the CD release. So yeah, I always think that I think of puppets as like uh, musical instruments, you know, to be played and yeah. kind of uh, oh, yeah. performed puppeteer expresses themselves through the puppet and so i just think like music and puppetry are such uh such great partners so yeah that's wonderful so so to wrap this up uh this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show when you think of nostalgia what do you think of or in your own words how do you define the word nostalgia oh nostalgia is um love for you know something in the past uh and um you know i feel like you know my love for this particular style of puppetry is like a kind of um nostalgia you know for simple things that can be kind of um, manipulated directly with your with your hands and i i love that you know kind of work and i think that um it's a little bit of a like 
lost craft in, in some ways. And so I think that, you know, I've always really loved, you know, being crafty and, and technical and working with my hands. And so I think that um, there's like a nostalgic part of me that loves this, this style of puppetry and that kind of work. And so, yeah. <laughs> nice. Great word to send on. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it was yes, great. It was so you. nice to meet you all. Thanks you for too. Yes, yes, you too. Yes. Yeah. yes, you're you're great. And then thank you so much, you know, for what you've done over the years and what you've done to be a part of our lives. You know, keep up a great work of what you're doing now. I cannot wait what's next in store. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. Bye. Yes, Have keep in touch. Bye. Enjoy the Again. rest of your day. See you too. Bye. 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 Uh, and it's goodbye from us as well. We absolutely enjoyed our time with Melissa Creighton. Uh, keep on the lookout for uh, more wonderful interviews coming your way. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Be sure to follow Jake and the Happy Nostalgia team on social media, check out our website, and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.